maybe 10 seconds. Thank you for joining us at Hawaii Wellness Network. And we're very excited today to have, to, we're gonna learn about brain injuries today. And they're in um, the Hawaii Wellness Magazine. Um, Hawaii, it's um, Brain Injury Hawaii, correct? Brain Injury Association. Associ uh, Association of Hawaii. And um, I, was just, I was just talking the other day about seeing kids on um, mopeds riding down the street with no helmets and I always think of you mm. because you get to see the end result when right. people aren't smart sometimes. And um, you contacted me recently that you had a really neat pilot program that you just got done. Do we did, we that? did, yeah. Um, the Brain Injury Association of Hawaii is trying to, um, would like to create a st uh, structured day program, therapeutic day program for folks with brain injury. And the goal of it is to get people back into the community to um, possible work or just daily living skills and things to learn in the community. So we started a pilot project to show what can be done if we actually had a full-blown program going with just five participants and two days a week rather than a full week. So it's three and a half hours a day for two days a week. And so we did that starting in August until now and have had amazing results. Oh, yes. yes, it's been, it really has been amazing. So Kendall is a, a participant of the program, and um, and then Betsy is his mother. Kendall, um, maybe you can share a little bit about how, why you were in the brain injury program. What mm -hmm. what happened to you? Okay, well, Great. sure. Back in back in March of uh, 07, so you know, five and a half years ago, wow. I had a uh, I went to sleep and uh, woke up and I felt a little funny. I just figured I had a rough night, and then um, got ready for work. Drove, uh, was driving to work, and then I remembered I needed my cell phone. So I turned around and I went back to uh, the house to get my cell phone. And I told my wife, and uh, that's when she knew something was wrong because I had a new job, and my new job didn't have a cell phone, and I had had this new job for about six months so um, she sat me down and we, we, we talked and asked me some questions but the concept of a brain injury you know didn't occur to me I just we, we weren't sure what had happened and um, it wasn't until about two weeks two weeks later did I realize that um, after some tests had been done that yes I had had a stroke mm -hmm. and that was very strange to me because um, Strokes are for old people, and I was 39. There's no way I could have had a stroke, but I apparently had a stroke. Um, enough time had passed so that they couldn't tell if it was yeah. a, a what? A well, they couldn't um, since two weeks. I mean, usually you think somebody having a stroke, and one of the most important things to do right away is to get medical help. Well, we didn't know what had happened. We didn't even know. Uh, about it until about two weeks later when he had an MRI and that's when they could tell there had been a stroke but they didn't know whether it was um, from a clot or if it had been from a bleed and they're treated very differently as you well know but um, so this brain injuries are often what they call hidden injuries because you don't know and you don't know what has happened to you and it's hidden even from the person um, who was affected. Yes. He didn't know what was wrong with him and then he couldn't tell you and it did affect his speech and his reading and his writing and a lot of these things we kept trying to th think oh he must be depressed he's lost his job and this and that and all the other kinds of behavioral symptoms mm -hmm. but um, the kind of stroke he had of the in the thalamus is often misdiagnosed as something that's just psychological. So, well, anyhow, I, I uh, had my, um, so it, it was obvious that I'd had a stroke, but um, it also revealed something called a, a AVM, which is an arterial vascular malformation. Yes, yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that was good. You got that out. <laughs> yeah, that was anyhow, awesome. Yeah. Anyhow, um, so uh, they have a, a treatment for that at the old uh, um, St. Francis Hospital in New Wanu. Um, and uh, it, it's an interesting concept. They, you, you go in for what they call gamma knife surgery, and 
I went into this, uh, uh, how, how do you say it? this? What's it called? Like a scan, like a two. Yeah, yeah. This a huge a, machine. You went yeah, in was it you, you nine know, times? Was, yeah, n nine times. I thought it was more, but you go into this, and they uh, uh, zap. The first thing they do is they put this colander-like thing on your head, and um, then they uh, uh, pre-program the the laser to zap certain segments of your your brain. And what they're doing literally is, is cauterizing a, a part of your brain and um, basically killing it off. And um, uh, the, the idea behind it is that in the past, you know, 30 years ago, if you'd had a, a stroke, the doctors would say, okay, you, you've had your first stroke, it was minor, let us know when the next more devastating stroke occurs. And that was the diagnosis. And it could happen in two weeks or 20 years. We just don't know. And um, thankfully, I don't live 30 years ago. I, I live today. And so I went in for the, for the treatment. And um, the, the occurrence of a second stroke, more devastating one, it reduced by 90, 95% if I had the surgery. So I, I had the surgery. And um, uh, that, that was was good but at the same time you know I, I'd broken my arms many times and had casts and you know your, your cast is on and when the cast comes off the arm is healed and everything's good but there's no cast for your brain and so you don't um, you don't really know when you're well and all the doctors could tell me was um, you're gonna be you know quite sleepy for a while but <laughs> you're going to you're going to get better and about between two to five years, you should be okay. Uh, I didn't realize that, you know what, I, what I felt was being okay was mean, meaning getting back to where I was. I had not yet realized that when you have a brain injury, you're a changed person for the rest of your life, and you're not the same person that you were before you had the brain injury. Um, that, came, that came later, but... What were some of the things that you were noticing was different, or looking back, you see this different. Well, well, looking back, um, you know, one thing for sure, I, I slept a lot. I slept a lot. Um, you know, it was not uncommon for me to sleep 15, 16 hours in a 24-hour period. And that's, you know, sleeping 10, 12 hours and then a four-hour nap or something How like that. How can you function doing sleeping all the time? Right, right. And, um, but uh, you know, I come to find out, you know, that's the way the brain heals. It's, it heals through your your, your sleeping. But um, uh, the, the the amazing thing for me was nobody really told me what was going on or what to expect. I I, I really really felt alone in what yeah. I was experiencing. This is really, I think, so, such the main thing because for five and a half years it was really yes. one thing after another trying and, and nothing seemed to work and we were learning. We didn't know, you know, what was wrong. But um, finally, only in this year, ha has he really begun to understand what, what happened to him. And yeah. thank goodness for this pilot program because it has made a huge difference. One thing I, I think about the pilot program is that I, I've never shared my experience with uh, you know m my my stroke and the AVM and the surgery. I've, I've never talked about it, never shared it with anybody. Um, didn't really know how. Mm -hmm. And um, I did really for the first time through the program and I'm, I'm very grateful you know to the, for that and um, I have found it to be very very beneficial for me um, I wanted to tell you that I, I you know applied for Goodwill and got an interview I was waiting for the call back <laughs> and you know and I, I there's this one person at Goodwill and she must be very difficult to get a hold of because I, I she and I are exchanging messages via phone oh, okay. 
for the last almost three weeks now. But anyhow, it's good news and it'll get better as soon as I know for sure. Okay. I wish I could have told you. That was one thing I wanted to do today was just to tell you uh -huh. that I had got the job, but I don't have it yet. So, so. That, so, so that everybody sort of understands mm -hmm. what the pilot program is, what we did was we had it broken down into basic three components. One was physical, the other was um, cognitive, healing the brain, learning, and then the other part was the social, emotional, recreational part of it. And eating. Yeah, basically yeah, was it was eating. eating. Yeah, <laughs> and um, and so we did a an hour of exercise, which ended up being a Tai Chi class, which Great. we did at the YWCA, and the um, that was really about balance and. Um, a lot of things that the brain needs to sort of start healing and it was really helpful. It was exhausting for them, but they yeah, really, really um, pulled <laughs> through and pushed through. And although um, Kendall had done some Tai Chi before, um, none of the other participants had done any and it was amazing to see it how really they was. came along and started yes. learning the moves. Okay, well. After Tai Chi, we all got together and we talked. That was our social recreational kind of component and we ate and that was when we sort of round table discuss things mm -hmm. and what what Kendall is talking about with um, was sharing and talking about I had each person talk about what type of brain injury we ranged from Kendall had a stroke but we also had car accidents mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. falls and somebody else who had a, a, a cardiac arrest and needed to be resuscitated so various types of injuries to the brain so we talked about that and that's sort of what um, Kendall's talking about when mm -hmm. he was able to share and really relate and talk about it. Yes, yeah. uh, that that was that was huge. It was the that first was time. Huge, it really was. We had and some great This is five and you know five and a half years, and and uh, you know I hadn't really talked about it and mm -hmm. didn't know what to talk about, mm -hmm. and uh, yet I was able to with these people, and they they could they they could really relate. They could understand. Yeah what I was going through and um, I had never experienced that before and it was only through the pilot program you know and meeting others who have had you know something similar had experienced something similar that I had that I was able to you know share that there's no way on earth I would have ever met any of the people any yeah, of them. It, it really yeah. changed him and it, it also changed everybody in the program benefited yes. in some way. It was so so amazing to see. And Carl, who was um, uh, in the newspaper because he, he wouldn't go swimming, he refused to. And yet, at the end, when one of the other brain injured people wanted to learn how to swim, that was his motivation and he overcame his own resistance. And we saw this kind of thing time and again in this program. Someone who was mainly in a wheelchair in the Tai Chi classes. And finally, she got up and she was participating, mm -hmm. standing up in this Tai Chi class. And the woman who was in charge of that, uh, at first she was reluctant to have brain injured people in her class she with all scared. these normal yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. And she you know, she says, ooh, brain, that sounds bad. Well, maybe it was the other way around then. <laughs> the normal people were. <laughs> well, she said afterwards. What is normal, really? Yes, yes, true. But um, she said afterwards that she was so moved by their, the brain injured people's, their dedication, their, their trying to get we better. Help, we helped the, her the class. class. Yes. Yes. <laughs> they motivated all the rest of the people to work harder. So that was a really wonderful, just one of many wonderful experiences, and all because of Mary and her perseverance to get this program. Kendall, are you keeping in touch with some of these people just as a support well, system? The, the, the program ended um, just a week ago, mm -hmm. so you know I I, um, I would like to keep in touch with them. I, I really would. They, Actually, uh, we're going to see one of them tomorrow. So yeah, that's right. Lifelong friends. Sure. And um, at the same time, we uh, you know we got the Christmas party, and hopefully, if we can um, you know find a place and get the the, the enough funding to funding. have you know a, a place, it would be wonderful to. Um, have a place where people with brain injury can go, you know, Monday through Thursday or Friday, just to be around others who have experienced something similar to what they have. Because I can tell you, after a brain injury, the one thing I felt more than anything else was being 
alone. Oh, you bet. You know, you could not, you, you, you have kids and they, they can't relate and you know, I've got a 17 year old son, a 13 year old daughter and you know, the last thing they want to do is talk to their dad, you know, but <laughs> it, it's, you know, it's, that's natural. But um, at the same time, you know, you, you can't communicate with um, you, your parents or your wife. It just does not, um, you, you can't really convey what you've experienced unless somebody else has gone through it. And that was the biggest asset for me, was just finding others who have, I mean, for the first time in five and a half years, I didn't feel alone. How did you hear about the program through your daughter? Through, through my mom. Oh, and, wow. And I, I think she heard about it through... Um, through Mary? Through Mary. But, you know, it was a long, convoluted way in which oh, yeah. I heard about it. But I'm so glad I did. But you know, it's you know, five and a half years of losses and and not knowing what to do and trying here and trying there, and um, meeting a lot of dead ends. And mm -hmm. there's so many people, thousands of people, even on just this island, with some kind of brain injury, that and young people, yes. any age, any ethnic group, and uh, so many different causes. And as uh, you know, Mary has worked with brain injured people for so long. It was wonderful to be around her because things that you thought maybe were terrible or wrong, and she was like, oh yeah, yeah, that's to be expected. Mm -hmm. And so this was a reassuring kind of information to get and uh, um, just to be around these other people. When I learned many things about my son, um, the first time when one participant said you know, he really couldn't read, he was having real trouble reading and he saw Kendall reading, and driving home I said, you had trouble reading too, didn't you? He said, yeah, I couldn't read for two years, but we really didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And he, it was just slower. And so there were so many things that, and, and I want to make out. the point that's interesting because you said it sort of a convoluted way and then mm -hmm. it made me realize too that, um, you know, one of the reasons that Betsy is, is here right now and stuff is because oftentimes when adults would get brain injuries or, you know, even adult 20-something year olds, all of a sudden become parents again. The parents have to then become parents and in that caregiver role. And those are the people that are really on the forefront of being persistent and Betsy's a tireless advocate. She didn't want to let she didn't want to let go. She didn't want to let go. She wanted to continue to find ways to help Kendall to move forward. And so she was contacting anybody and everybody who <laughs> might have some kind of help and assistance and of course finally we found Mary. Yeah, yes. of course she would connect in um, eventually and it's it's her persistency that get it gets it often because um, as with every family member that's in your situation, the person with the brain injury cannot advocate for themselves. No. no. You can't know where to go or how to problem solve the pathways because the brain, that's brain steps, right? To figure out it, how it to just It takes time, right. it takes time. You know, things really do get better, they really do. But you know, they get but better it takes with, time. with rehab too. And this is one of yeah, my pet, is, pet kind of projects here because this was the first kind of little attempt here to get some structured rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. And there's been so much research on the brain the past decade. They've learned so many things. They've learned how the, the, the plasticity of the brain, how the brain can heal itself and how make new connections, things that are lost, if it's stimulated mm -hmm. on a regular basis in the right way. And um, medicine and science are, but you know, medical insurers don't want to hear that. Um, but this, for the first time, this pilot program showed us that no matter how long it's been since your injury, that you can get better. And this is mm -hmm. something, this hope, and you could see it in the eyes of the people participating. And it gave them a sort of a new purpose and also their families who are struggling. And that's why what we need is a resource center here on a permanent basis so that people, when they go to the mainland and get rehabilitation, they don't come back here and then lose those gains because mm -hmm. there's nothing here. 
And that's what we really need here. Absolutely. Mary, are you getting support from the state to the pilot program? Or? This particular project was actually funded through a uh, contract with the Department of Health. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we were able to get to this place and now we need funding to implement it. Right. So it was, um, the funds were actually taken from a fund that was set up from driving violations, speeding, no. Uh, no kiki seats. There's a portion of the ticket that goes into a special fund called the Neurotrauma Fund, and that's where this project was well, Hopefully that will continue and expand your program because it's so needed in the community. It is. There is nothing like this in the state of Hawaii no. and has never been. And it's not going to solve all the problems of brain injury, but it's at least going to give us something to sort of help people integrate. And I was actually, my expectations were exceeded in this program. Yes. They really were. I did not expect so much functional gain. I mean, real functional gain from mm -hmm. each each particular person. And mm -hmm. I, how I'm fulfilling to hear that he's going to maybe get a job. Exactly. I mean, that's the end result is yeah. to live your yeah. life and be back where you were. I yeah. had each of them make goals mm -hmm. for the project. Like, what were your? What do you want to get out of this project? And Kendall um, made two goals with me. Uh, one goal was came out right at the beginning and it was very powerful. It was to mm. share his brain injury with his children. That's true because I hadn't, I, you know, my 17 year old son and my 13 year old daughter, I had not spoken to them about my brain injury. It's been five and a half years, you know, and, um, you know, there are certain aspects of their. Um, they're growing up that I that I missed and that they miss me and um, my 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 wife and I are, are you know I'm in the process of getting a, a divorce you know that was one area where we couldn't um, uh, rec I couldn't reconcile um, and neither could my wife but you know I needed to speak to my kids about my brain injury and the upcoming divorce and I was able to do that. Yeah, that Thanks was, to the pilot program. Thanks to the because I, I don't think I would have ever spoken to mm -hmm. my kids about it. Mm -hmm. I can actually, I can guarantee yeah, you, I wouldn't have spoken to my kids about my injury um, had I not been in the pilot program. And that was an early goal, because I, I said it by, I said by the end of this month, and we were end still, of August, end yeah. of August. Yeah. Yeah. And I waited till August 31st, but I did it. <laughs> yeah. I did it in August. Yeah. <laughs> And so. then the, the other goal that we sat <coughs> down together and, and wrote down was that um, he really wanted to get back into the workforce. Mm -hmm. So we started with some small goals, and that's what I did because this wasn't a long project. So um, in order to get to that spot, we set down the goal that you would spend two afternoons mm -hmm. before the end of October, two afternoons doing a volunteer work. Mm -hmm. And I felt like he could do some stuff with the Brain Injury Association. He also wanted to do some volunteer work with the Humane Society, but would be a step in getting um, voca vocational rehabilitation or getting a mm -hmm. job. However, Kendall has some serious motivation, <laughs> and he went beyond that and filled up, brought an application in and said, Mary, can you help me fill this application out? Mm -hmm. We sat down. I was like, Okay, that was a really <laughs> do the volunteer work, but let's and we filled out the application, mm -hmm. followed through, brought that application in. These are all these seem simple steps, yeah, but after yeah. a brain injury, they're huge. They're huge. It's getting they're from huge. A to D, they're and huge. it's yeah. like and you've got to go through out. B, C before you can get to D. But you, you've got to go through the steps, and and you know just missing the steps is part of you know um, you know what a brain injury is. You. you you really can't get from A to D without going through B and C, but yeah. you you miss it somehow. You Even know? though you don't know yet, yeah. I'm proud that you got that first the first interview. Two oh yeah, thanks. Yeah, 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 I had two. I'm I, proud I talked to two yeah. different yeah. people, but um, yeah, they know I'm good. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, but at the same time, you know, before I had my stroke, I was an educator. You know, I taught kids and my education, you know, I taught um, primarily middle school kids and um, uh, and then I, I worked in for the uh, uh, for the Arizona Memorial uh, for six years I was their uh, education person there and then I was working for the Hawaii Conservation Alliance as their education person. Um, I had recently transferred to the Hawaii Conservation Alliance and was just you know, four or five months into working with them when I had my stroke. 
and that changed everything because I couldn't do what I used to be able to do and um, I found that um, and so did my boss. My boss at the time was very understanding and um, uh, but when the time came for him to uh, you know find out whether or not I should be rehired he didn't have make the decision other people did and he told me that uh, he said Kendall these other people aren't going to be as understanding as me and he suggested that I you know resign before I get fired I, I thanked him and I I resigned so you know less than nine months after I'd started this great job I uh, resigned and I started in the beginning of November of 06 and I resigned the last day of August of 07 so not even a year and um, my life had changed completely and you know something else I found out in the pilot program about you and that was you, um, that you have trouble remembering names some names yeah. mm -hmm. and that explained a whole lot of things why he would withdraw and sort of not be he used to be very open and social and he just kind of became a hermit and I, then it was clear he couldn't remember people's names and he told the story in the pilot program of how when he was a teacher and he would have class maybe four or five classes of 30 people and he would tell them on the first day of school I'm going to know all your names by the end of the first week and he did so this was a huge difference but it's something that he didn't even know yeah but he just I, he didn't know people so he kind of just withdrew and that's mm -hmm. more of that aloneness well, thanks for sharing your story. Mary, how um, would someone get a hold of you if they have resources or they would like to help with the funding or they want to get some more information? They could go to our website, the BIAUSA.org backslash Hawaii. Okay. Do you want to say that again in case someone's writing okay, that down? It's <laughs> BIAUSA. Wait now, BIAUSA.org <laughs> <laughs> backslash Hawaii. Yeah, when you say it quickly, it's easier. <laughs> Yeah, and the number, uh, the phone number is 808-436-8977. And of course, you're in the Hawaii Wellness Directory. So oh, good. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, That's for the great. last couple of years, so I'm trying to educate everybody about the resources. Perfect. So thank you for telling your amazing story, and you're well, so lucky to have such a support system and yes. blazing yeah. mom. And this, this support system for <laughs> so many families. Yeah. We are very grateful to you, Mary. Thank you. Thanks for letting us yes, share. Yes, thank you for coming on. And good luck on the funding for the next oh, pilot program. You bet. Thanks. Anybody have a check for two hundred and fifty thousand? <laughs> well, there we go. That's <laughs> a challenge. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Bye. Wave. Keep talking. Keep <laughs> That's okay. <laughs>